It is now time for member statements. Member for Waterloo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. This weekend, I participated in the Bridges to Hope project organized by two Waterloo Oxford students, Olivia Miller and Greta Dotsert. These young women are true difference makers. They reached out, spoke up, and created a strong sense of community around mental health. This project was inspired by a teen in the UK who attached messages to a frequently traveled bridge, and it ended up preventing six suicides. These uplifting messages on bridges hope, bring hope and awareness about mental health and now cover three Waterloo Region bridges. Our students are leading the way, and the research shows that peer-to-peer -peer support can have a profoundly positive effect for well-being. Student voices matter. We were joined by Waterloo Region District School Board student trustees Oscar Juddelson Kelly and Ben Wall, who spoke about ensuring that our schools are safe, inclusive, and supportive places. Christine Strong, a young person who has lived experience with mental health, shared that her healing has been about taking that first step and not knowing how many steps there are. We owe it to our young people to be supporting their efforts and to show that we hear them through providing resources and support. These students had an idea and they ran with it. We have the potential to share hope at a much broader level. Certainly, an in-year cut of $330 million by this government will not address the crisis in mental health and the wait times for counselling. When people have the courage to speak up and ask for help, help needs to be available in real time. I urge the Ford government to follow the lead of these Waterloo Region students. They have spoken truth to power. Will this government listen? Thank you, Member Statements. The member for Glengarry Prescott Russell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I'd like to talk about a great Ontarian, a great character of our Francophone community, Gaetan Gervais. He was he left behind him a lot of heritage from the Francophone Ontario. Just think about the green and white flag uh, that represents the Francophone community that was raised for the first time in 1975 at the University of Sudbury. He was born in 44. He studied at the Sacré Cœur College at Laurentian University and Ottawa. University. He was also history lecturer, um, professor rather, at uh, Laurentian University, and he was also defending francophone rights in Ontario. His contribution was very important, and the Ontario Francophone Association of Ontario gives every year a $100 uh, um, subsidy that helps francophone universities in the greater Sudbury area as well as to a student from uh, Boreal College. Um, high school, a francophone high school in Oakville also wears his name and I would like to give the family and um, his family and his friends uh, all my condolences, and I would like to thank him for the work he did for our province. Thank you. Merci. Thank you. Next statement, the member for Oshawa. October 24th is World Polio Day, and I want to highlight the vital work of Rotarians across our communities as they work to eradicate polio from the face of the earth. Thanks in large part to Rotary International and to the 1.2 million Rotary members worldwide, including the 10 Durham Region Rotary Clubs and our two in Oshawa, Polio will soon be just a memory. Polio is a crippling childhood disease that is terribly infectious and leads to paralysis and sometimes death. During the first half of the 20th century, polio crippled over half a million people every year. There is no cure, but there is a preventative vaccine. For as little as 60 cents worth of vaccine, a child can be protected against this disease for life. In 1985, Rotary International and its partners launched the Global Polio Eradication Initiative, and the incidence of polio has plummeted from about 350,000 children paralyzed every year to fewer than 20 confirmed cases this year. On World Polio Day this year, something special is happening in Oshawa. In our new global classroom at Durham College, there is a global live stream being hosted by the Oshawa Rotary Club and the Oshawa Parkwood Rotary Club. The World Polio Day live stream will broadcast through a network of colleges worldwide and to Rotarians all around the world, including to special guests in Pakistan, where it will be 3.30 in the morning. The world is 99.9% polio-free, but the fight to end polio is not over. Rotarians around the world will not stop fundraising, fighting, and advocating until our world is polio-free. For this important work and all of the caring and community work that Rotarians do across Oshawa, Durham Region, and the world, we say thank you. 
supplementary statements. The member for Simcoe North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Earlier this month, the Detroit Red Wings president and CEO, Christopher Illich, announced that they would be honouring Leonard Red Kelly by retiring his number four jersey. Mm. Kelly, born in Simcoe, Ontario, played 13 seasons with the Red Wings and eight seasons with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Right. He was elected into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1969, and in 2001, he was inducted into the Ontario Sports Hall of Fame. Mr. Kelly was a top defenseman. He played on eight Stanley Cup teams, won la three Lady Bing trophies, and the Norris Trophy, and in 2017, he was named one of the 100 greatest NHL players in history. Oh, Not only was Red an incredible hockey player and coach, but he also had a great sense of civic duty, serving as a federal member of parliament for three years, from 1962 to 65. His core values, values such as hard work, determination, ambition, and passion, inspired communities throughout North America. Red was and continues to be an inspiration for so many, so much so that two constituents from my riding of Simcoe North spent two years telling Red's story. David Dupuis and Waxy Gregoire are two writers from Penetang Machine that co-authored the book entitled The Red Kelly Story. We were all thrilled when the biography won the Ontario Speaker's Book Award in 2016, and both men were proud that they were able to have a part in recounting Red's life, one that was lived well on and off the ice. Red even coached our own member from Haldeman Norfolk MPP Barrett. I'm looking forward to Mr. Kelly's jersey retirement and special celebration on February 1st, 2019, and I hope more people continue to learn about his great legacy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> member statements. The member for Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm rising to speak on an issue that's incredibly important to me: proper access to mental health services in Niagara. Over the past few weeks. Our community has been shaken to its very core following the heart-wrenching loss of two members of our community. Members of our com community who struggled, who felt they had no other choice but to end their lives. Over the last few weeks, our community has come together like it always does in times of tragedy to raise our collective voice and say to our fellow citizens, we love you, to reach out to those who are battling mental health issues and tell them we love them, we care for them, and we're there for them. But we need help, Mr. Speaker. We need to ensure that residents have access to mental health supports any time we need them and that proper funding is in place to ensure these programs are available. Outside of political parties, we must do this together as elected representatives. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to introduce legislation which will call for support of mental health services in Niagara. I hope we can come together, regardless of political party, to ensure these supports are increased. I hope we can do this so we never need to have another memorial for a wonderful resident taken from us far too soon. I hope we can collectively say we care and take care to do better. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member statements. The member for Don Dolly West. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to take an opportunity to talk about the importance of parent involvement in children's education. I think that anyone who is a parent or who has been involved in education knows that that relationship can be very important, and that there are many, many ways to be involved in a child's education. The reality is, Mr. Speaker, that sometimes parents in schools need some support to understand exactly how to do that and to develop skills in being involved. And that's exactly why the Parent Reaching Out grants were were established, Mr. Speaker, since 2006. 22,000 parent reaching out grants have been allocated around the province. And when you think that there are 5,000 publicly funded schools in Ontario, Mr. Speaker, that suggests that the vast majority of young people in this province and their families have been affected and helped by a parent reaching out grant. Over 900 regional provincial parent reaching out grants have also been granted. Let me give you some examples. Blue Water District School Board, Huron Heights Public School, $975 for helping parents understand mental health. Um, uh, Conseil scolaire via monde. Uh, educated parents equal involved parents, $1,000. A regional grant went to Halton District School Board uh, Parent Involvement Committee, $12,500 for 21st century student success, creating a culture of equity, inclusion, and well-being. These are important grants, Mr. Speaker. I recognize that they are on hold, but that suggests that they are at risk. Likewise, Mr. Speaker, we, we're being told that the student, uh, the student Speak Up grants are on hold, Mr. Speaker, and those grants likewise help students to raise their voices. They're very important. They should be continued, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Cambridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On October 18th, we 
would mark the anniversary of Persons Day in Canada. This day marks the historic decision in 1929 to include women in the legal definition of person. This decision gave women the right to be appointed to the Senate of Canada and paved the way for women's increased participation in public and political life. In 1927, five women, who have since become known as the Famous Five, launched a legal challenge that would later mark a turning point for women's rights in Canada. These five women from Alberta were journalists, politicians, and activists who asked the Supreme Court of Canada if the word person in Section 24 of the British North America Act included female persons. The Supreme Court later decided that the word person did not include women. The Famous Five did not give up. They took their case to the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council of Great Britain in London, which was then Canada's highest court of appeal. On October 18, 1929, Lord Sankey, Lord Chancellor of Great Britain, announced that the word person should include females. The obvious answer, he said, why should it not? On Persons Day, we pay tribute to the famous five, Emily Murphy, Nellie McClung, Irene Parlby, Louise McKinney, and Henrietta Muir Edwards for their persistence and their work to create a more equal and inclusive society. The decision to include women as persons under the law was a milestone victory for women across Canada. Not only had the Famous Five won the right for women to serve in the Senate, but they paved the way for women to participate equally in all aspects of life in Canada. We can all do our, our part to carry on the legacy of the Famous Five by encouraging women and girls to participate in political and public life and celebrating the achievements and contributions of women and girls at home and in our communities. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Nickelback. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to speak about the terrible driving condition in the west end of my riding. In July of this year, my office started to receive complaints of dangerous driving condition linked to the work being done on a four-kilometer stretch from Sleepy Hollow Road to Worthington Road on Highway 17. Yep. Bad signage, no traffic management, reduced visibility due to uncontrolled dust, loose gravel flying everywhere. There were no signs advising driver to slow down for the gravel section. Only after many complaints did the Ministry of Transportation finally get involved. There were many damage claims. We brought these forward to the Ministry, who responded in writing, and I quote, with respect to vehicle damage, Interpaving Limited is responsible for addressing any damage caused by their construction operation. In the event that Interpaving does not address your constituents' concern, claims to recover damage may be submitted to the Ministry of Government Services, and he gave us the address. Over 25 people have contacted our office about damage to their vehicle, including Carol Clarence, Jack Cosmerly, Donald Law, Marc Larivière, Lalievre, sorry, and Lila Zazulin. All that they are getting, Speaker, is the runaround, with Interpaving saying, go to the ministry, and the ministry saying, go to Interpaving. This is not right. The construction is still going on. It is still dangerous. This government needs to do better. Thank you, Speaker. Member Statements, the member for Markham Union Board. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. A couple of weeks ago, I visited the Venture Lab at IBM in Markham for their first annual Made in York Region event. This event showcased the creativity and the entrepreneurial spirit that business in Markham Region possess and their contribution to York Region's vibrant local economy. Markham in particular, hosts more than 1,500 of these high-tech and life science companies and continue to attract foreign direct investment for more than 210 foreign companies. The companies that I encountered operate in different areas, from healthcare technologies to legal consultation applications. However, they all shared one thing in common. They were started by individuals with a vision and a desire to improve the lives of our communities. Mr. Speaker, our government is committed to supporting these small businesses as we acknowledge that they are job creators in our increasingly technologized economy. As they continue to grow, we will help Ontario become an economical hub 
for business. We have done this by vowing to cut the small business tax rate and lower the hydro cost for this same small business. We promise the small business will be supported by this government. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The member's statements. The member for Burlington. Thank you, Speaker. Last week, I had the opportunity to tour and spend some time with the people who run ABB in Burlington. It was exhilarating to tour the facility and learn a tiny bit about the truly amazing and vital work that they do, Speaker. ABB is a, a Swedish-Swiss multinational headquartered in Zurich, Switzerland. They operate mainly in robotics, power-heavy electrical equipment, and automation technology. It is the fifth largest Swiss company by revenue. This is the kind of company the world is talking about, Speaker. ABB actually built a major portion of the power grid in Canada. As urban centres develop farther and farther away from power sources, we need to find new ways of efficiently transporting energy from where it is available to where it is needed. ABB is a pioneer of high-voltage direct current transmission, enabling grids to transport greater levels of power over longer distances with minimal losses, Speaker. ABB uh, refers to the time in history as the fourth industrial revolution. As robotics and artificial intelligence applications continue to gather momentum, ABB is applying the pragmatic to the promise. I am very impressed and am immensely proud to have ABB operating in Burlington. I want to extend my gratitude to ARC. Uh, Kalinowski, Stephen Medeiros, Trevor Batch, Batcher, Ravinder Bas Basanti Johal, Shelley Babin, <coughs> Kevin DeRee, and Carolina Gallo for taking the time out of their busy day to show me what they do and outline how it is done. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. That concludes our time for member statements. Recognize the member for Guelph on a point of order.